Hi, this little video is about magnetic flux. The symbol for magnetic flux is the Greek letter phi, and that's shown there with the circle and the vertical line through it. The unit for magnetic flux is the Weber, and the Weber is a unit that is related to the Tesla, which measures magnetic field strength. Nikolai Tesla, who the Tesla is named after, appears on this Serbian banknote. He's pretty famous. The word flux comes from the Latin, a Latin word meaning a flow. So magnetic flux is like the flow of magnetic field through an area. Mathematically, you can determine the amount of magnetic flux by measuring the strength of the magnetic field and multiplying it by the area that it's acting through. There we go. Phi equals B times A, the mag magnetic field strength times the area that it's acting through. I've rearranged it further down the page there so that it gives B equals phi over A, and that's just another way of looking at magnetic field strength, so you can also call it the flux density. Yeah, I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but clearly the flux through an area can change if the, if the area's position relative to the magnetic field changes. This is the famous Michael Faraday. He's responsible for Faraday's law which is to do with electromagnetic induction. Do you remember from year 12 what electromagnetic induction is? In case you've forgotten, electromagnetic induction is when you, you can make electricity by moving a magnet and a wire in relation to each other without actually touching. If you do that, you'll produce electricity in the wire. There we go, Faraday's law. The curly E there stands for induced voltage. It's a bit like EMF from the, cell, from the battery or cells that we did earlier in the year. You can see from that relationship that the induced voltage is, depends on the change in flux divided by the time. So if the flux changes really quickly, you get lots of voltage. If the flux changes slower, you get less voltage. The negative sign is to do with Lenz's law, which is on the next slide. Okay, so why the negative sign? Lenz's law is like a law of cussedness for physics. And if you do chemistry, it's a bit like Le Chatelier's equilibrium principle. But all it says is that the current produced by an induced voltage is in such a direction that it makes a magnetic field to oppose the change that produced the induced voltage. It's a bit of a circular thing, really, but it just produces current to try and oppose what you're doing to it. Back to Faraday's law again, if the wire happens to have more than one loop, say in a coil or in a generator, then you just have to multiply the induced voltage by the number of loops. And so that's what the big N is in that, in that relationship there. A good example is in that picture there which is the generator probably in a power station. It'll have lots and lots of loops and so therefore a really high voltage. It'll also be turning really quickly so that the flux through those loops will be changing really rapidly. Hence the high voltage again.